In today's video, six stories of things that schools have done well during remote learning. Hello coaches, welcome back to another episode of Five Minute Friday. My name is Kim and I am the premium mentor for the Coach Micro Credential. As you might know, here at Adero Learning, we've been hosting lots of conversations with educators in international schools, primarily around Asia, but actually all around the world that have been experiencing remote learning already for 10 weeks. So we've had a lot of opportunity to dig into what schools are doing well and areas that might be able to be improved. Today, we're sharing six personal stories from educators that we've featured in those conversations, highlighting one thing that their individual school has done well during this remote learning experience. All of the longer conversations can be found on our emergency school closures page, and I will leave the link for that in the description box below. I'll introduce each teacher as I share the thing that their school did well, and you'll get to hear from them directly. Six stories that schools have done well during remote learning starts with the first one, testing. Whether it's doing trial closures or testing systems once school is closed, NIST International School in Bangkok, Thailand has been doing a great job experimenting and trialing and testing all the different aspects of school closure. And I'm going to let Ben Sheridan share how that's worked here in Bangkok. One thing I think that we've learned is to test, test, test. Um, whenever we're looking at implementing a change, we uh, run small tests to see how these changes affect the different um, user groups, like uh, how it affects teachers, how it affects students, how it affects parents. Oftentimes we have a uh, system set up because we're doing all of this remotely and online. And one small change over here can actually lead to ripple effects or have larger changes or un unseen changes over in this area. So we <clears throat> develop small, smaller groups to test or year levels, uh, and then we gather data. So we try and gather as much data as we can. And sometimes uh, when we run a test, we don't immediately make a change. We actually run multiple tests over a time to really see how things um, play out. So test and also patience. The second story of schools doing remote learning well is a consistency in rollout, whether it's across grade levels or experiences for the learning times that are developmentally appropriate for each student. I'm going to let Pana Asavavatana of Taipei American School in Taipei, Taiwan, share how TIS did a great job with that. So one thing that our school did really well was as we rolled out e-learning, we really made a conscious effort to ensure that it looked the same in almost every grade level. There may have been some slight differences in the speed of rollout, but if parents had multiple kids across the grade levels, they could expect consistency in what to expect and create routines at home. The other thing that I think we really did well was we plotted out how many minutes we expected each child at each grade level to spend on each task that was assigned to them so that we could total out the number of minutes each day they would be spending doing their schoolwork. This helped us ensure that we kept the workload within developmentally appropriate times, um, understanding that working through a screen is not the same as being in school. The third story of a thing that schools have done well during remote learning is to streamline. Less tools, more focus, enable sharing and cooperation among teachers. And I am going to let Amy Garrett of Hong Kong International School in Hong Kong share the ways that HKS is doing that well. One thing that's been really beneficial during this home learning experience is to streamline and simplify our process. We've called in instructional coaches to help prioritize standards and oversee the curriculum that's being delivered and taught during this time. We've also simplified our platforms. There's lots of cool apps and tools we could be using and we may use off and on in the classroom, but we've tried to narrow it down to keeping a very simple workflow for students to be able to manage, particularly in the primary grades. Um, and I feel it's been um, very successful for us in our home learning experience to streamline our communication and our workflow. The fourth story I'm sharing today of something uh, schools have done well during remote learning is to solicit feedback, to distribute surveys, and to then respond to what they're hearing. And I will let Jeff Lehman of International School of Beijing, China, share how ISB has been doing that really well. Hey, 
My name is Jeff Lehman, and I teach uh, middle school design at the International School of Beijing. Something my school's done really well during the COVID-19 epidemic is solicit feedback from stakeholders and then make decisions based on that feedback. Um, whether it's open Zoom sessions with different levels of administrators or whether it's formal surveys, um, everybody from our assistant principals to principals to our head of school has uh, done a great job of collecting feedback from all of our stakeholders uh, and then making decisions that make us uh, feel supported and heard throughout this entire thing. The fifth example, the fifth story of something schools have done right during remote learning is to build community. And this has nothing to do with actual school, but it's all about building that community virtually when teachers are spread all around the globe. So I'll let Shep tell you about the lip sync battles at Sheku International School in China. Hi, my name is Shep. I'm a learning innovation coach. Uh, I'm Kim. I'm a music teacher at Sheku International School. Uh, so we've been kicking around this idea with our friends for years, and we recently started a lip sync battle with our colleagues at Sheku International School. So I think we were just really craving an outlet where we could just be silly and creative and kind of tune everything else out that's going on in the world. And the response that we've gotten to this has just been incredible. I, I think that everybody has been craving this right now. And we sort of inadvertently created this shared space for our community where we can come together from all over the world, even though we're separated across the globe. And we don't talk about work and we don't talk about the news. And we just to get, get to watch these silly videos and have a good laugh at each other and with each other. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been um, a really great thing to, to strengthen our community, even though we're so spread out. When I wake up. Well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I heave up, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be the man who's heavering to you. But I would walk five hundred miles and I would walk five hundred more to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. And last but not least, our sixth story of something a school is doing well during remote learning is to provide real-time connections to allow the staff to connect and chat during real time, even if teachers are spread around the globe. And I'm going to let Lissa Lehman of International School of Beijing share how ISB is doing that well. Hi, my name is Lissa. You might know me as the Director of Curriculum and Instruction and the Director of Coattail for Aduro but I'm also currently the Professional Learning Project Coordinator at the International School of Beijing. At the end of January, ISB chose to facilitate our e-learning asynchronously. However, one thing that they have done well is provide opportunities for the community to come together in real time. Within the first week of the closure, we had upgraded access to Zoom and our admin team began offering weekly opportunities to connect. Our head of school hosts at least one live session for staff each week. These sessions have no agenda and are simply a time for us to gather as a community and ask any questions we might have. There is also a live session for parents each week, hosted by our head of school, principals, or director of learning. Our counselors host open sessions for staff in which we are able to connect and share our stories, successful moments, and discuss the struggles we are facing. Even though our staff is spread out around the world, these opportunities have helped us continue to feel connected to each other and be more present for our students. All right, those were six stories of things that schools are doing well during remote learning. They were to test and trial, to have consistency and rollout, to streamline tools, to solicit feedback, to build community, and provide opportunity for real-time connections. Hopefully hearing from teachers in schools that have been closed for much longer than anywhere else in the world right now gives you some ideas for how you can prepare for a longer-term school closure wherever you are. If you have things that you think your school has done well, please share them with us in the comments below. 
And if you have questions about what these schools are doing and how they're doing them, let us know because we'd love to support you. And of course, if you want to see all of the resources that we have compiled around these emergency school closures since early in January, check out our emergency school closures page, and I will leave the link to that in the description box below as well. At Eduro, we have been humbled to have had educators from around the world join us in panel conversations and respond to our emergency school closures resources. We want to continue to support you. We know how challenging it is to be an educator right now. We know that school leaders and coaches are looking for ways to keep their community inspired and to relentlessly build community. That's why we've made our online course, Your Connected Classroom, free for you and your peers right now. You can find the link in the description box below. We have been creating community virtually for over a decade now through our Coattail program and through the Coach Micro Credential. It's something we know inside and out, and we want to support you through this difficult time. Follow us at Adura Learning or subscribe to the Coach Better podcast to continue this conversation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.